Hey everybody, this is Curtis Reacts. Today we're reacting to Ricky Gervais. Actually, Ricky Gervais's best arguments against religion. What is Ricky saying? What's the truth? What's the state of the human race? I'm gonna be approaching this as always from my standpoint as a Swedenborgian Christian. Check out my other channel to know my viewpoint. I pretty thoroughly spelled it out over 1200 videos. So let's see what the, how I would see this through the lens of that. Why don't you believe in God? Well, that's a very strange question. Why don't you believe in God? Well, you came up with it. Why, why would I? Religion's greatest trick wasn't convincing some people that there was a God who was all powerful. Um, it was convincing everyone else that you couldn't ridicule that idea. Okay, point number one. I think it's not a very strange question, though, because nobody's shocked by the question because basically everybody in history has believed in God. He cast it there as like religion has convinced people of this. Like it's always throughout history been that this top down, there are these religious people that have their power centers and they, they got propaganda that they feed to the masses. Like sort of think of the worst abuses of, oh, you know, the Catholic church or something. And that that's been the story of people and religion. They've so tightly controlled it that you can't ridicule that idea. Throughout all of history, you go to every continent, every people, and they've got religion. And they believe in something that fills that God's spot. Monotheism, sure, there's a ton of it. Polytheism, but often polytheism, that those are different parts of one great spirit. I guess you could look at it lately as being like that, but it's not all top down. People believe in God. It's not all top down. A lot of it's bottom up. A lot of it's people having their own experiences. This is something beyond me. I've had a, a vision or an experience that is so widespread. Cultures all over. It's not just like the Pope said this thing. He's got some really good tendrils out into the world. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not trying to just be grumpy to this. Okay, maybe I can be more positive to the next one. We're all born atheist, you know, and then that gets changed or enhanced. I mean, there shouldn't even be a word for atheism. It shouldn't exist. You shouldn't need it. There's not a word for not believing in fairies, you know? And if people didn't keep inventing these weird, impossible deities, we wouldn't have to go around denying them. You're born atheist. Are you sure about that? And he's like, if people, if people would just stop inventing these weird things, like fairies and stuff. Oh, that's, is that because kids, they, they learn about that stuff from adults and that's why they believe in it? Adults said you should, you should have an imaginary friend. Okay, I'll, I'll make one up. Before that, I didn't think. Before that, I was just like, ah, uh, you know, I was marveling at um, physics. I mean, kids are full of the world beyond the physical world. So many kids are like, oh, I've got these people that I talk to in my little head, and I don't know if they know what the line is, but, but absolutely, well, certainly kids are not born materialist. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if there's data to support that. The human brain, when it's, when it's young, is a sponge. It has to be. It has to take in all the information. It has to trust its parents, its elders, to survive. Uh, without question, don't touch the fire. Why not? Don't go near the wolf. Don't touch that spider with a red bit. Don't touch that. Why not? Just don't. There is a God. What? There is a God. And if you're bad, you go to hell. Okay? And if that's constantly confirmed, like all the other things, wolves eat you, black widows kill you, fires burn you, if it's given that same level of credence and truth, you're never going to get over it. It's going to be a lot harder to undo that. I think the myths came up, maybe, you know, often as a stopgap to, to knowledge until we find out more. You know, the earth is flat, and now we've proved now, okay, the earth's not flat, we were wrong, okay? But that's not personal. You don't take that personally. It doesn't affect you. It doesn't affect your afterlife, you know? I feel like i got to stop before I forget some of the previous stuff. So I get, he's saying, uh, if you're bad, you go to hell, which I get that a lot of people have those ideas wreak havoc in their psyche. People grow up racked with guilt. Can I live up to what my religion is prescribing to me? People believe that their friends are going to go to hell because they're not in the same religion as them. People get sucked into the joy of condemning others to hell. I get it. I, I get where all that's coming from. He's saying the parents are warning children of these real dangers and then the, the dangers of hell 
are imagined. And I, I, yeah, I don't believe in a, the kind of hell that most, I guess, that mainstream Christianity promotes. I don't know exactly where they got that idea because it sure isn't the, you get little scraps of it maybe in the Bible, but it's mainly out of Dante and, and other Christian thinkers afterwards. I mean, Jesus talks about Gehenna, which is a valley, but anyway, to me, hell is, you see hell in the way that human beings can treat each other. That you see hell in evil. There's the hell is just the pleasure in evil. And everybody believes in evil. I mean, Rick, Ricky Gervais is here trying to stop what he thinks is an evil, which is, if we don't want to call it that, but it's the teaching kids about religion or about God is going to harm them. So it's not to be done, which is the same thing as evil. Evil is just some, what is not to be done because it's harmful. Well, some people love that stuff. Some people go and they murder each other and they steal from each other. And they destroy and degrade each other and they enjoy it. That is what hell is. And you got to stay away from that. That's worse than a black widow. That's worse than a wolf because it destroys human lives and destroys, yeah, I think destroys your spirit. They often want to hold on to, to that, but only because of the way they've been conditioned. We know it's, it's fun to tell children there's a Santa Claus and there's, there's fairies at the bottom of the garden and all these cute things. It's cute till they're seven or eight. If they're th 34, it's a bit embarrassing socially. This is my son. What's he doing? He's looking for fairies. Is he? Okay, we better leave. So he's saying that people get personally attached to their religious beliefs and so don't want to have them proven wrong, which is absolutely right. The human psychology, it doesn't just morph and change because you're talking about religious things. I think that many people's and mine at times, your involvement in religious ideas, it's just another place for your ego to set up shop. Just like you don't want to be proven wrong about politics or sports, you don't want to be proven wrong about religion. And I think it can be a very similar part of your mind, the part that wants to be greater than everyone and doesn't want to be wrong, can be holding religious concepts just fine. Religious concepts don't on their own automatically lift us up into the stratosphere of deep thought and, and great wisdom. You can be small and holding on to those in much the same way. So I don't have a problem with that. If you're born in India, you're probably a Hindu. If you're born in America, you're probably a Christian. If you're born in Pakistan, you're probably a Muslim. That's a coincidence, isn't it? That you're always born into the right God. Always, isn't that lucky? I was born into the right God. All those others are going to hell, but I was born into the right religion. I'm going to heaven. That's a great point. That's true. Isn't it weird that, hey, I'm here and everyone around me is this religion, so most likely I'm that religion. I guess that could be a problem for uh, somebody who is, let's say, a Christian and believed to go to heaven, you have to be a Christian. That's not what I believe. And that's not what I believe religions are here to do. I mean, when I say you don't have to be a Christian to go to heaven, what do you mean by being a Christian? What do you mean by being a Christian? Do you mean saying the name of Jesus Christ and reading the text of the Bible and that that alone and, and saying whatever some people have this thing, the sinner's prayer where I'm you know, I believe you died for me. And then that, is that what it means to be a Christian? Or is it to live a life of love to God and love of the neighbor? Which Jesus said, everything hangs on. The picture according to Swedenborg. Why is the world set up like that where there are these different religions? There's only one God. Any religion can be a pathway to God. The ingredients to heaven are you live rightly by what you believe in a spirit of love and charity for your neighbor. That's the important thing. The important thing is that understanding the difference between what's right and wrong as you understand it, and sometimes having to struggle against yourself to do what is you believe is right. It doesn't mean that there aren't fundamental truths about what is right and wrong. But if you're talking about what creates heaven in the human heart, it's that you are trying to do the right thing. Everybody knows that this is how it works. Somebody can do something. Let's say somebody accidentally in some way went and compromised your bank information so that other people stole it and took all your money out. Well, let's say somebody went and did that. You'd be mad at that person. But if they said, oh no, I thought by giving these people your credit card that they were going to give you a big cash award. That's what they told me. I'm sorry. I was, I thought this was going to be good for you. You can still be like, why are you so, why are you so dumb? But the way you feel about them changes because they were trying to do the right thing. That's what matters. And that's what touches your heart. You go, it doesn't matter what, you can go see people who have all these different beliefs. If you see them trying to do the right thing, there's something universal about that. That is the path to heaven. 
Swedenborg believed, and I'm, I find his arguments very compelling, that there is deep truth in Christianity, that there's a fullness of truth there, but it's not immediately apparent. But there is, there are, you can find those truths in different ways in the other religions as well. All of them are set up by the providence of God to lead people into heaven. Yes, if you believe that belonging to your religious group and that belonging to your religious group is a matter of checking certain boxes and everyone else does not go to heaven, that idea needs to be mocked because it just, it doesn't make sense. Now, I'm not saying you can't get to heaven with that idea if you believe it earnestly and are acting in love to your neighbor, but overall, it's true. That, that is an aberration on religion, and if it were removed, everything would go better. Dogma is the, is the dangerous bit, and it doesn't just really exist in religion. It exists uh, in more and more places now, that cultism, that that which shouldn't be questioned. Anything that, you know, that's, that's what you want to question. If someone says you shouldn't question this, though, you've got, you've got to question it. You've got to question it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Y you can't even have a religious faith in God that is genuine that you're not allowed to question. Sure. As Ricky was pointing out before, when you're a kid, you are taught by the grown-ups around you. They influence you in ways that they want to. They put ideas into your head. And if you're raised in, let's say, a Christian church, you're going to be getting a lot of influences from your parents and from teachers and from the preacher that this is what's going on. There comes a point, though, you mentioned it before when you said, oh, there's, you know, if you're still 30 and looking for fairy, there's a point when you have to think for yourself. It doesn't mean that, that the mark of that is you throw out what you had before, but anything that you took on the word of others, you now have to, it's you and that concept. And you have to sit there and examine it and say, is this really, do I really believe it's true and good? Do I think this is plausible? And do I think this is, this is right? Meaning right, like morally right. You absolutely have to use your rationality and freedom to examine it or else you'll never have a genuine connection to God. Because I think when you examine it, you will find God in there, but you got to examine it. So I'm not, I'm not arguing with that, Ricky, man. It should be irrelevant, but it isn't because it does infringe on people's liberties. Certainly religion, not spirituality, you know, someone believing in God, that's fine. Doesn't, harmless. Doesn't, absolutely, doesn't bother me at all. Religion isn't harmless. It, it's when it's, when your God starts telling you that you should kill homosexuals and... You exactly. Know, that's when it, that's when it's not harmless anymore. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Everyone is entitled to their beliefs. He's fine with that, but where it hits the fan, is how that makes you act toward the rest of the world. I'm sitting here in the Western world. I was like, is there any religion that we says kill homosexuals? But I guess in some countries it's true. Again, this comes back to if if what is what is the essence of religion? Once it spills out into things that are not religion, then you get all this complication that he's, people like him have to take apart. Because for Christianity, for example, you shall not murder. If you start to work around that and say, well, we can murder sometimes, that's a tangled web. I mean, obviously then it's like the whole thing. Of course people are going to go to war with it. It's like what we were talking about before, where the ego mind can grab religious concepts just as easily as it can grab secular ones. The worst case of this, and you do see it following religion throughout its history, is oh, I'm going to use religion to justify the worst human impulses. It's inescapable. People do that. It makes it easier for people to do that when we're confused about what the essence of religion is, which I said, essence of religion is religion is a tool that is useful to help me, I would say, help God make me into a person who acts from love. Religion is about the way your life is lived and it is the intent of it is to make you a more and more morally upstanding individual. Once we lose sight as that of that as the core of religion, then yeah, man, I could totally see why people would say this is a problem for the world because you can look out and just see the times when it's been used as an addendum onto people's desire to kill and dominate and destroy. Most religious people aren't crazy. It's something else. Again, it's something, you know, um, uh, and uh, uh, we, we worry about the people who believe the bad bits in their holy book as well as the good bits. Most nice people who believe in God, they can tell the difference. They do, they know the nice, they cherry pick and they know the nice bits from the bad bits. They don't do the bad bits. And my point is, if you know the bad bits from the good bits, you don't need the holy book. You know, you're already a moral person. To unpack that a bit. So he's saying most, most nice people 
know the bad bits from the good bits in the holy book. Yes, I'm talking about nice people that Ricky Gervais can recognize. Oh yeah, that person is a Christian, but they're nice. There's something universally you recognize about kindness. I'm saying that kindness is the heart of religion. And I would argue that religion is a tool and a very effective tool to make people more like that. Because he says, look, if you already recognize it, then, then you don't need the book in the first place. I don't think that's how it works. I think that Ricky and myself and everyone, we're living in a world that was made as nice as it is by religion. That's what I think. I was just reading this book by Tom Holland called Dominion, where it talks about the Greek and Roman, particularly the Roman Empire and some of the brutality that's in there. And that a lot of the ideas that we take for granted, care for the weak, fairness, equality, it's not automatic to humanity. It's not how chimpanzees are. Even though I get it, you can look in the Bible and there's tons of nauseating stuff in there, but yet people for thousands of years have successfully picked out the bits that work for them and from it live the kind of lives that I think have led actually to much more good in the world than harm, actually exponentially more. And the reason is because there's an internal sense, there is a spirit inside the Bible. There's an outer covering, which is the literal sense of the word that, yeah, most of us run into and we say, what is good? What is this? What is this part? But oh, this part glows to me. And something about when I read the whole thing, it influences me. It makes me better. It's because there's a spirit inside of it. That's why I said in the beginning, I'm a Swedenborgian Christian, because Swedenborg's explanation makes it makes sense why the Bible has the good and bad bits in it, what the Bible is actually about, and why so many people are attracted to Christianity. Yeah, they don't like the parts that seem negative, but they see the soul of it as the morality that he says you don't need the book for. Actually, the book has that morality in it. It's in the spirit of it, the internal sense. You've got to check out Swedenborg for that. Otherwise, yeah, if, if I didn't know about Swedenborg, I wouldn't be arguing too much with Ricky Gervais. I'd be like, oh, okay, fine, 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 fair points. Yeah, I don't think I really am into Christianity or the Bible either. Although there be certain parts of it I'd still love and admire. Swedenborg, internal sense, correspondences, that's how the Bible makes sense. Okay, that's my reaction. This is always the same. I always come to the same point at the end. But you know, consistency is good. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time and we'll see where my conclusion is.